Hi, I'm Frank, and welcome to Programming Your Do-It-Yourself Home Alarm Kit. Honeywell's already programmed this system for a normal home. In most cases, it will work right out of the box. All you need to do is wire it according to the default program, and you won't have to do any programming. However, if you have unique circumstances, a remote workshop, a garage, a summer home or a winter home, if you're concerned about frozen pipes or basement flooding, you can adapt this system to any of these unique circumstances simply by adjusting its programming. Today I'm going to show you how to do that and also how Honeywell has already set it up so that your programming in any case will be minimal. Let's begin. Your package will come with a user manual. That, this will actually explain how to operate the system. An installation manual, and this will help you get your sensors connected along with this video series and get it up and running. But the key to the package is the programming form. Honeywell has actually put together a list of every line of programming that you are allowed to configure, what it does, and what default Honeywell has already put there. If you look at this before you do your wiring, you can pretty much set this system up to work right out of the box. And that's what we've done in the previous series here. We looked at how they program the zones, for instance. Zone number one, an entry zone. An entry zone would have a 30 second delay entering, a 45 second delay leaving, we know it's you leaving, so we don't want you to have to rush as much, but we don't know who's coming in. So the doors that you come and go, you would connect those to zone number one, no programming to do. Zone number two is set up as a follower zone. A follower zone is an interior motion detector zone. What that means is anything connected to that zone will be off if you arm the system to stay, because you're telling it that you're going to be staying in, so you want to move around inside. But it would put the interior zone on when you arm it to away. If there's an intrusion, we want an alarm. But the follower, that's the key to a good motion detector program. What the follower does is it follows the lead of the entry door. If the entry door has been opened and the motion detector sees someone in the house, it will wait the 30 seconds like the door to allow you time to disarm the system before the siren goes off. However, if the motion detector detects a presence in the house and the entry door had not been opened, then it will assume it's not you and it will set the siren off instantly. Let's take a closer look at the program form. It's broken down into numbered lines with a short description, a number in brackets, which is the default that Honeywell has pre-programmed that line to be, and an empty box, which allows you to enter your own value if you want to. Let's take a look at line number 30, the alarm sounder. Honeywell's programmed the siren to play for four minutes, which is usually enough time to wake you up if there's a problem, intimidate the person out, and allow the control to call for help. Once that's done, it will shut itself off, reset it, and go back to protecting. But let's say you have a neighbor close by and you want to increase the sound of the siren so that it can alert your neighbor. You can go to this line, number 30, Look next to the description and you'll see that if you wanted to increase it to 12 minutes, you would enter a number 3 on that line. It will beep to acknowledge your entry and it will advance to the next line, number 31. Let's talk about entering program mode. As you recall, our system is booted up. All of our devices are connected. Our keypad displays ready. There are two ways to enter program mode. When we powered up the system, for 50 seconds, it displayed D1 in the window. During that 50 seconds, you could push the star and the pound key at the same time, and it would enter program mode. A little tip is that the system expects you, as the owner, to do things in a fluid, confident manner, without hesitation. It's got a very fast reset. It doesn't want the crook being able to hunt and peck and figure out your code. 
So when you do things, you have to do them like you know what you're doing. So take a little time in advance. Map out your strategy before you start pushing buttons. Because once you're in this program mode, you can turn it into a doorstop real quick. So you want to make sure that you don't hit any buttons that you didn't plan on. All right, let's look at how to enter program mode with a code. If you go to your installation manual, it will tell you under the section of programming a unique code that you can use to enter program mode for this system. You would go ahead and enter that code, push the key number 8, which is labeled code, and the key 0. Okay, there we go. Now the system is blinking to 0. That's the first line of user programming. It's ready to begin. Don't be alarmed if it displays no AC in the corner of the window. That's normal for programming mode. Don't pay any attention to it. All right, back to our programming form. Let's say we have two things that we want to change. We want to increase the time that the siren will play. Say you have a neighbor close by. You want to increase that to 12 minutes, giving them a more opportunity to hear that there's a problem at your house. The second thing we want to change is zone number five. We're not going to use a smoke detector with this system. Instead, we've got an extra motion detector. So we want to change that from a fire zone to an interior follower zone. To get to line 30, we don't have to go through it one line at a time. We can simply jump to 30 by entering the star key, the three key, and the zero key. When we hit star 30, you'll see that it jumps to 3-0. We're ready to change the duration of the siren. The default value is a 1, which is 4 minutes. We want to change that to a 3, which equals 12 minutes. So simply enter 3. It will beep at you to confirm that it received the entry. It'll advance to the next line. Now we can look down at our program form. We see that zone number 5 is line 35. So we would hit star 3, 5. It advances to line 35. I should take a minute and explain zone types. You'll see that each zone has a different type. The type is how you want the system to behave. Zone 5 is set to be a zone type 9. A zone type 9, if you look at the description, is a fire zone. And that's active 24 hours a day, whether the system is armed or not. A fire zone will always be ready to go. We want to change that to a motion detector zone, which is number 4, an interior follower. To do that, we would go back to our keypad. It's displaying 35, which is zone number 5. We would enter a 4. That will change the zone type from a 9 fire to a 4 interior follower, ideal for a motion detector. And that's the two lines that we wanted to change. Everything else in the program form we've looked over and we decided that that's going to work fine for us. We just want to exit. You would do that by hitting the star 9 9. That will put your system back to ready if everything is closed changes the display back to AC from no AC and your system is ready to use. And that concludes this step programming your do-it-yourself home alarm kit. I hope you'll join me next time as we talk about adding the optional voice dialer to your system. Thanks for joining me.